All right. Babaloni with my man, El Senor Perfecto. Bill Algi and Peanut Algi, I was making a special appearance. Bill, Dude, man, uh, listen. You heard your voice. You came running. Listen, Bill, for you, those of you who don't know Bill, Bill has just been destroying it on the regional scene. He's been the ring of combat. 145 pound champion for the last few years finishing everybody i've had the pleasure of, of watching his evolution from an amateur fighter to a pro and let me tell you something this man has every tool in the toolbox bill has you, finally brother. listen this is well deserved he finally got the call he's going to be appearing on the the premiere of Dana White's Contender Series coming up on June 18th. Bill, first, thanks for giving me some time. I know it's crazy right now, but it's got to be a good feeling knowing that, you know, I know you're such a hard worker and you put your dues in. It's got to be a great feeling right now. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's all about those long-term goals. This took uh, eight years of fighting professionally and about two years before that and, you know, a couple years before that training. Uh, so yeah, this is a long time, and a lot of effort, and a lot of people, and a lot of, a lot of hard work, a lot of tears, a lot of blood, a lot of, a lot of ups and downs. But you know, we're getting there where we want to be. Listen, I know you. I know you more than most guys I interview. So I know that you're not happy just getting there. I no. know that you're gonna go. You want to go there, and you're gonna go there and impose your will. And this isn't just going to be one appearance. I know that in your mind and, and you believe and you will, you're going to go there and you're going to win this fight. One of the things that I've been wanting to ask you about is, you know, when I talk to fighters or when you see guys talk to fighters, a lot of times they, they talk about, you know, their ground game, their striking, their cardio. For me, when I watch you fight, and I want you to tell me if this is true, I love watching your eyes. To me, you have like, eyes and anticipation it's almost like when you're out there and i'm watching you it's almost like you're you're fighting in slow motion because you see the action you kind of anticipate what's coming is that accurate Do you feel that way like as you've evolved has it slowed down for you in there because it seems like you're always in control like i've seen you slap yeah. away strikes i've seen you anticipate tons of the, the double legs and yeah. it just seems to me like it's slowed down to you a lot and that's one of your strengths Absolutely. You need it as a fighter. You need what's called strong eyes. Ojos fuertes is uh, what we say in, uh, in Spanish, right? Uh, it's something I preach to every single one of my, my fighters. And it's something you kind of lose if you, like, if you stop sparring for a little bit or if you stop kind of going at a certain level. Like, you kind of lose it. And it comes back quick, but it's something you have to constantly test. That's why you'll see, like, guys like Lomachenko doing reaction drills and stuff like that as they get closer to the fight. It's not something you need to do every single week it's not something you know you make up uh part of your routine but as i get closer to the fight um i'm for sure concerned about my eyes my reaction that kind of stuff i mean that anticipating what they're going to do next is is a huge part of fighting it's a huge part of anything but uh for sure with fighting it makes it makes it a lot more fun too when you know they're going to throw it you see that shoulder cock back you know it's coming so you already have three four things that you're going to hit them with after it comes through well, listen, this, you've been in the same routine for quite a while now because you've been, you know, fighting in Atlantic City and locally. Mm -hmm. What's going to be, is it going to be a little bit different for you? Because now you got to travel to Vegas. At least you don't got to be bothered with selling tickets and chasing people down for that. So your routine is going to be a little bit different this time. And listen, you're a worldly guy. You've traveled in the past. But obviously, when you're, it's, it's going to be a little bit different for you. What do you anticipate? Do you Are you going to go out to Vegas early? How's it going to all work for you? We'll see. I haven't really decided yet. Um, I think uh, I just got the contract. They said they're going to send me out Saturday. I fight Tuesday. Maybe I go early just to, uh, you know, figure out the lay of the land a little bit. Um, and tickets are cheap. Tickets are like 200 bucks. I think, to Vegas from Philly. So it's not an issue. Um, but, yeah, it's you, you nailed it. Like, it's the best feeling not having to worry about selling a ticket <laughs> you know that's that's the biggest pain in the butt especially you know fight week everyone waits till that till the last second to get their tickets and i'm looking forward to not to have to do any of that and just focus on a fight you know which is kind of nice well, well speaking of focusing on a fight brendan luffnane the guy you're fighting he's got you know 19 fights i think he's 16 and three yep. are you a film junkie are you going to watch everything you can or you don't even care i see and he looks like he's long he doesn't mm -hmm. look like he's a stocky guy. He looks like he's long like you. Tell mm -hmm. me a, bit, a little bit about your opponent. Yeah, you know, I think uh, I think he's 
like me, maybe an inch shorter, but probably has like the same size reach or whatever. And he's a good kickboxer, you know. So am I. I'm good everywhere. And uh, I watch. I watch a couple fights. I watch his like most recent ones or whatever. Get a general idea of what kind of guy he is, and, and I go from there. And then I pretty much just stop watching all film from that. Any more times watching the same fight over and over again, you're just going to build him up to be a monster in your head, and you have no idea what he's going to do that night at that time. So it's not like I can prepare like, oh, he did this in this fight, and that guy kind of looks like this. It's not how it works. You go in there with an idea of like, all right, I think this guy wants to strike me. All right, we'll see what's up, you know, and that's it. And just prepare your butt off and and do the best that you can do one way or another. Well, you know, if he's been watching the film of you, the one thing he's not going to realize is how good of a grappler and how good your jiu-jitsu is because you love, you would rather stand in the middle of the cage and strike at this point. I was over talking to Will Martinez and he was just, you know, telling telling me how amazing your striking has gotten that people forget how great your ground game is. Obviously, are you able to do any, do you know about him? Does he, about his jujitsu or anything like that? Do you do like any besides film work? Any background checks on him like that? Because he's he's from London, so we don't yeah. know how much he you know what he trains. I mean, I mean, obviously London doesn't have the best wrestling, but he's got good enough wrestling, like counter wrestling, you know, for like MMA. So he's not going to be the easiest to take down, but if it's there, I'll take it. But it all starts from here's you, here's me. Let's see who's better at punching each other and kicking each other, and then from there we'll make other decisions like takedowns and submissions and that kind of stuff. But I don't go into any fight just like, oh, man, I got to sub this guy. You know, otherwise it's going to be a tough fight. No, I'm here to fight anybody. And where does every fight start from? It starts from the feet. It doesn't start from some guy sitting on his butt, you know, trying to pull guard and stuff like that. So um, you need to be proficient at striking, at wrestling, number one. And then from there, that sets up your jiu-jitsu. Or if he wants to take you down, that sets up your jiu-jitsu, that kind of stuff. But – um rule number one is you need to be good at the first art which is striking distance control timing everything takedowns that's more important it's going to be odd for you to be there not being here here in the algeo chant hmm. you know with your with your army of people there but uh i'm sure that you know you're prepared regardless give some shout outs to the school bill algeo algeo mma and kickboxing is in king of prussia pennsylvania bill has an unbelievable large quality fight team and everyday mma he's got kids classes i see tons of stuff give some shout outs and some love out bill i know there's tons of people who have supported you over the years because you're just you know outside of the cage you're also a gentleman yeah absolutely man uh first and foremost i want to thank not only my students but uh my training staff uh my coaches my assistant coaches who work at the gym uh without them i really could not be able to do a lot of things i do and have the freedom i i have uh, they make it pretty easy for me to to come in, make small changes, help out where I need to. But uh, they're the you know the the blood of the school as well as the student base. And I've got just man a great a great group of of students that that want to learn that really just dive into martial arts. And it's my job to make sure the the facility itself at Algeo MMA is uh, conducive to that to that uh, lifestyle. It's not a bunch of tough guys. It's a bunch of people just trying to improve their overall lifestyles. And that's what I try to create at the gym and and that's what's paying dividends you know um other than that you know my usual thanks to my coaches eric corner uh will martinez uh my boxing coach uh rel smith uh that's pretty much it myself (laughs) i got myself here you know thanks bill great job (laughs) listen i'm i'm sad that i don't get to see you in person but I'm thrilled to death because I know how hard you worked and how much blood, sweat, and tears you put in. And you know what? It's, it's hard for me. to. I'm supposed to be neutral as a reporter, but you know what? Go kick his ass, my man. I've been with you for years, and you know, I'll be at home screaming at the TV, and I'm sure Peanut will be home watching, too. Boy, I hope they put the TV on for that. There he is. Look at him. There yeah. he is. <laughs> She's just Bill. Hey, Bill, man. Best of luck once again. Thanks for giving me some time. You got an yeah. army of fans back here bringing you some support. Go get that victory, and I look forward to uh, talking to you afterwards, my man. Thank you, man. That wins the only thing I care about right now. That's it. All right. Thanks. Best of luck with your final preparations, and of course, you're. I got to talk to you before you're deep into the weight cut, so you're a little. You're smiling today, so you're not too oh, dehydrated. Yeah. Which is a good thing. Yeah, I had some Rice Krispies. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my man, El Senor Perfecto, Bill Algio. It's Adios. always a pleasure, Bill.
All right.